check. Welcome to F-18 Hornet. This training section will teach you the basics of getting the Hornet airborne. We'll cover the fundamentals of flight and aircraft control, including an orientation to the instrumentation. Sit back for a moment and enjoy this short demo while we familiarize you with some of F-18 Hornet's basic features. A training mission has been designed to go with each training topic. Select your topic, review the material, then click on the Hornet at the bottom of the training board. You may press pause at any time during flight with the P key. To return from your mission to the classroom, you shift escape. Choose a new topic or return to the main menu by selecting the flight book. At this point, you may start your engines and taxi to the duty runway. Once on the active, contact the tower for final clearance for takeoff. One last control check and steadily advancing the throttles steers the aircraft down the runway. As speed increases to nose wheel liftoff, pull smoothly back on the stick and the aircraft lifts skyward. Once airborne, practice the basics of climbing, descending, and maneuvering your aircraft. Check out the terrain with a multitude of views. You'll be learning how to handle a damaged aircraft with a review of some basic emergency procedures. This will wrap the first phase of your F-18 training syllabus. Listen through each topic, then hop in the cockpit and try it for yourself. Reviewing the training material is required. Good luck and good flying. To fly, an aircraft must overcome the effects of drag and gravity by generating countering forces of thrust and lift. Thrust is the force pushing the aircraft forward, increasing the airflow over the wings and overcoming the various forms of drag. Because of the curvature of the wing, air must travel farther over the top than the underside. This in turn produces high pressure underneath the wing and low pressure over the top. 
This difference in pressure contributes to the upward force known as lift. The angle at which the wing is inclined to the airflow is called the angle of attack, or AOA. AOA is critical to the generation of lift. The larger the AOA, the more lift will be produced, up to a point. High AOA causes airflow over the wings to become turbulent. Lift drops off, and the aircraft is said to be stalled. Typically, stalls are a result of too little airspeed in relation to angle of attack. Much of an aircraft's performance is dependent on weight. The more an aircraft weighs, the more lift it will need to produce. This means it takes more AOA and or more airspeed to make the aircraft fly. Two basic sources of drag are form drag and induced drag. Form drag is a derivative of the shape of an object and is produced when the object moves through the air. Increasing speed increases drag. Induced drag is directly related to the amount of lift produced. The more lift, the more drag is created. Total drag is the combination of form drag and induced drag. The aircraft is flown with three basic controls, the control stick, the rudder pedals, and the throttle. In F-18 Hornet, the keyboard, mouse, or joystick is used to simulate the control stick. Keyboard commands simulate the rudder pedals and the engine power levers. We'll use the term stick to refer to pitch and roll control movements. The stick controls both the aircraft's pitch and roll. We highly recommend a four-button or better joystick for use with F-18 Hornet. Roll is movement about the longitudinal axis of the aircraft. To control roll, use a side-to-side -side motion of the stick. Moving the stick to the left or right will cause the aircraft to roll until the stick is recentered. The amount of roll is called the angle of bank. Once the aircraft is banked, the force of lift is no longer vertical, but at an angle equal to the bank angle. If the pilot pulls back on the stick while banked, some of the lift goes to the left or right, turning the aircraft in the direction of the bank. Pitch is motion about the aircraft's lateral axis. Pitch causes the nose of the aircraft to move up or down relative to the horizon. To control pitch, use forward and back stick pressure. Yaw is the movement of the aircraft right or left about the vertical axis. This is controlled by the rudder in F-18 Hornet, and the comma and period keys apply left and right rudder. The forward slash key centers the rudder. Hornet has two braking systems, the speed brake and the wheel brakes. The space bar activates both brakes. The speed brake is a panel on the back of the aircraft that, when extended, slows the aircraft in flight. When the brake is engaged, the word brake will illuminate on the left warning panel. Before attempting flight, become familiar with the elements of the instrument panel. Your aircraft performs in three master modes, navigation, air-to-ground, and air-to-air. -air. The instrumentation is the pulse of your aircraft and the key to implementing the master modes. The instrument panel is divided into six general areas. The left digital display indicator, or DDI, displays engine information or weapon selection and delivery mode. The Integrated Fuel Engine Indicator, or IFEI, offers easy-to-read engine and fuel info. The Upfront Control, or UFC, will indicate autopilot and take-hand selections, plus info when you ID other aircraft with IFF. The Horizontal Situation Display, or HSD, just below the UFC, is used for navigation. Selected radar modes and damage to the aircraft are displayed in the right DDI. Backup instruments located in the standby instrument group include the artificial horizon, radar warning receiver azimuth display, airspeed, altimeter, and the vertical airspeed. Located on the top of the instrument panel is the heads-up display, or HUD. To hide the instrument panel at any time, press Control-I. The HUD is used as the primary flight instrument and weapon delivery display for the aircraft. Most operations can be performed with reference to the HUD alone. Certain items and symbology displayed in the HUD are specific to the selected master mode. For this reason, HUD displays will be discussed in many of the training topics to follow. The altitude readout can either show barometric altitude, the height above sea level, or radar altitude, the height above ground level. An R will be displayed next to the altitude box whenever radar altimeter is selected.
the radar altimeter is toggled with control A. At the top of the HUD is a heading tape with scrolling numerals. The caret at the center of the scale indicates your current heading. At the bottom of the HUD is a bank angle scale with tick marks located at 5 degrees, 15 degrees, 30 degrees, and 45 degrees. The bank angle scale will be useful as you learn to fly patterns. The pitch ladder consists of a horizon bar and parallel 5 degree pitch lines above and below the horizon. Pitch lines above the horizon are solid, while pitch lines below the horizon are dashed. At the outside end of all pitch lines are tick marks, which always point toward the horizon. The velocity vector indicates your aircraft's flight path. When the velocity vector is above the horizon bar, the aircraft is climbing. When the velocity vector is below the horizon, the aircraft is descending. To maintain level flight, you must hold the velocity vector on the horizon. Vertical velocity, used as an aid in landing the aircraft, is indicated on the right-hand side of the HUD above the altitude box. The aircraft waterline is displayed when the gear are down as small W symbol. The waterline represents the aircraft's centerline. By definition, the location of the waterline on the HUD is fixed and does not vary. HUD readouts include airspeed, angle of attack, Mach number, g-force, and altitude. At times, you may find it to your advantage to reduce the amount of symbology displayed on the HUD. Toggle the HUD clutter reject by pressing Control c HUD display may be hidden entirely by pressing Control h You start your mission in the cockpit view. You may return to this view at any time by pressing the 1 key. Pressing the 2 key will select a look-down view of the cockpit instrument panel. The 3 view will always point toward your aircraft and can be rotated about the vertical axis with the arrow keys. The 4 key provides the situational awareness view, while in this view, pressing 4 again invokes the padlock view. The padlock view is a tactical view and will keep your aircraft in the foreground while locking your view of the last radar contact. The 5 key toggles radar contact view and will show you whatever is selected on radar. The 6 key invokes the tower view. The 7 key will track launched weapons and the 8 key is a weapon eye view. Platform views are selected by invoking shift 1 through shift 6. All platform views provide an eye point mounted on the aircraft facing forward. They can be zoomed, however they cannot be panned or rotated. Look around by pressing and holding the arrow keys. The 45 degree up view is selected by the up arrow key. The left and right side views are selected by the left and right arrow keys. The rear view is selected with the arrow down. Use the up or down arrow key in combination with the left or right arrow key to modify your previous views. Zoom is available in all views except the cockpit look down view. Shift plus zooms in and shift minus is used for zooming out. Changing views will return your view to a normal magnification. The camera in and camera out keys, 9 and 0 respectively, may be used in most external views of the aircraft, missiles, and bombs. This point in your training marks the end of the basic overview. Each topic has a training mission developed to emphasize the material you covered in the subtopics. After viewing a subtopic or upon completion of a training topic, build your flight skills by flying the training mission. Select the Hornet at the bottom of the training board to begin the mission. Use Shift Escape to return to the classroom. Pause at any time by pressing P. Now let's get started doing what pilots love to do, fly. Start your engines by pressing the plus key. Both engines spool up to their idle RPM of 60%. Adjust engine RPM using the plus key to increase and the minus key to decrease. With the aircraft stopped, decreasing your engine RPM below 60% will shut the engines down and end your current mission. The delete key activates the afterburners. If engine RPM is below 100%, pressing delete will increase engine RPM to 100%. The next press will activate the stage 1 afterburner. This is indicated by NOS position in the left DDI and more noticeably in the IFEI. Subsequent presses of the key will increase the afterburner stage to a maximum of 6. Remember, afterburner gives a tremendous increase in thrust at a cost of much greater fuel flow. You'll have only a few minutes of flight in afterburner stage 6. Shut down the afterburners by pressing either the plus or minus key. 
Go to look down view by pressing the 2 key and check the remaining fuel in the integrated engine fuel monitor. Note your bingo fuel level. Bingo is the fuel required to return to base with a minimum reserve. A voice warning will alert you when fuel level reaches bingo. Time shows the amount of fuel remaining in minutes and seconds based on your current fuel flow. Normal taxi speed is approximately 15 knots. As you taxi, notice NWS in the lower right corner of the HUD. This indicates that nose wheel steering is engaged. Nose wheel steering high is active below 20 knots and allows you greater maneuverability at slower speeds. Nose wheel steering activates at 20 knots, aiding you in holding a straighter path as you reach takeoff speed. Attaining takeoff speed, nose wheel steering switches off. All friendly airfields will have fuel tanks with large white F's painted on the tarmac next to them to signify the refueling and rearming area. To refuel, taxi onto the F and come to a complete stop. Press Shift S for service, replenishing all your stores and topping off your fuel tanks. Contact a ground control on the radio by pressing Shift G to get permission to taxi to the runway. Once cleared, taxi to the departure end of the runway called the hold short. Stop at the hold and call the tower by pressing Shift T. Once the tower clears you for takeoff, taxi onto the runway. Once cleared for takeoff, advance your power and start the roll down the runway. The flaps should be lowered for both takeoff and landing since they increase lift at low speeds. Lower flaps using the F key. The flap indicator lamp is located on the lower panel left of the IFEI. Release the wheel brake if the brake lamp is illuminated. Advance power to 100% and ignite the stage one afterburner with the delete or backspace key. As your aircraft approaches about 130 knots, pull back on the stick. Once airborne, ease up on the back pressure as the velocity vector passes through 5 degrees to avoid climbing too steeply. Try to maintain the velocity vector even with the 10 degree pitch ladder line by adjusting your stick position. Use small, smooth control movements. Once safely away from the ground, raise the gear using the G key and the flaps with the F key. Your landing gear automatically retracts once speed exceeds 300 knots. Flaps raise automatically once your speed exceeds 250 knots. Note that they do not automatically extend for landings. Adjust your power level to maintain airspeed above 250 knots. As you approach 5,000 feet, start to apply some forward stick to level the nose. To maintain level flight, just use forward or back stick to maintain the velocity vector on the horizon line. The power settings do not set your exact speed, they just control engine power. To increase speed, increase your power setting to a higher level. As your aircraft approaches the desired airspeed, reduce power until the increase stops. The aircraft will take more power to climb and maintain speed and less to descend and maintain speed. To decrease speed quickly, press and hold the space bar, activating the air brake. The position of the velocity vector indicates the actual aircraft flight path. To maintain level flight, the velocity vector should be held on the horizon bar of the pitch ladder. To climb, the velocity vector should be positioned above the horizon. To descend, hold it below the horizon. Control stick deflection will cause the velocity vector to either rise or fall. Holding the control stick centered should stabilize the velocity vector at the current position. To maintain a level turn, the velocity vector must stay even with the horizon line. If it is above or below the horizon, the aircraft will be in a climbing or descending turn. As the turn rate increases, so will the stick deflection and the aircraft G-loading. Understanding basic emergency procedures is essential for dealing with aircraft damage such as a lost HUD, failed engine, or loss of hydraulics. Damage is displayed on the right DDI by pressing D. Loss of your HUD makes flying difficult. Take note of the position of the horizon on the HUD frame. As long as you keep a reasonable airspeed holding the HUD horizon in about this position, you should maintain reasonably level flight. Check your standby instrument group for readouts on airspeed, altitude, and attitude of your aircraft. If damaged in battle, try to return to base. 
If the heading back to base is known, use the heading readout in the look down nav display. If not, visually navigate back to base. In the event of engine failure, level the aircraft and increase thrust on the good engine. Try to maintain airspeed above 200 knots. Apply rudder as needed to counter yaw. You can jettison stores to reduce weight. By selecting the store to be jettisoned using the J key, the jettison station select display is located left of the integrated fuel engine indicator. Note that stores displayed on the wing pylons are selected and jettisoned in pairs to maintain the balance of the aircraft. Press return or enter to jettison the selected store. The jettisoned weapons are not armed and will not explode. Recovery from excessively slow flight or a stall is very difficult with a single engine. Landing is also difficult. Land fast for an extra margin of safety. Loss of hydraulics makes the flight controls very sluggish. Not a problem in level flight, but recovering from unusual attitudes is difficult. Level the aircraft as soon as possible, maintain less than 45 degrees bank angle, and less than 20 degrees nose high or nose low attitude. Land as soon as possible.
Altitude, 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 altitude. 